This geothermal well is discharging at 600 tonnes per hour from a deep aquifer at a temperature of 250 degrees centigrade. Stop. Features like this are common in volcanic terrains such as the Taupo Volcanic Zone in, in New Zealand, recognised as one of the most active regions on Earth. Volcanism ranges from andesites to voluminous rhyolites and ignimbrites. Sporadic basalt eruptions occur, such as this one, the 1886 eruption of Mount Tarawera. Overnight, this basalt eruption produced the 10-kilometre chasm seen here. The eruption also destroyed the famous pink and white terraces of Lake Rotomahana and produced a series of hydrothermal eruption craters like Frying Pan Lake at Waimangu. Features like these now contain active hot springs. The volcanoes and geothermal regions occupy an extensional tectonic terrain revealed here by the Pyroa Fault, an active normal fault. Overall, the crustal extension here results in subsidence at rates of 5 to 8 millimetres per year. Waiatapu is one of the largest New Zealand geothermal systems with a natural heat flow of about 450 megawatts. Most features in geothermal areas are caused by steam rising to the surface from boiling aquifers a few hundred meters below. Shallow steam eruptions occur and surface rocks are strongly altered to clay by acidic condensate formed from the steam. Powerful steam jets are called fumaroles. enlarge themselves by collapse and dissolution of rock by acidic condensate. These acid waters are formed where hydrogen sulphide is absorbed from the steam into water droplets and oxidized to sulfuric acid by atmospheric oxygen. Where the sulphur content of the droplets becomes very high, native sulphur is precipitated to form stalactites. In contrast to steam heated features, hot springs occur where water flows directly to the surface from deep aquifers. Here the champagne pool discharges about 20 kilograms per second of water from a 250 degrees C aquifer 300 meters below. In other hot springs the deep fluid may be diluted by shallow groundwater below the surface. The water flow from champagne pool deposits amorphous silica to produce an extensive silica center terrace. The pool itself is 40 metres in diameter and over 60 metres deep. Chemical data suggests that in the boiling aquifer below the pool, gold may be actively depositing at 4,000 grams per year, about 100 metres below the surface. Champagne Pool itself was formed by a deep-seated hydrothermal eruption 900 years ago. Blankets the area around the pool. Here it occurs above the pumice layer deposited by the last violent Taupo eruption 2,000 years ago. 
A hydrothermal eruption deposit contains large hydrothermally altered blocks set in a fine gradient matrix. Class sizes are variable and provide evidence of depth of origin. Nearly 4 million grams of gold are thought to have been deposited below the pool. It is certainly a gold deposit in process of formation, like many now mined around the Pacific. In the pool itself, carbon dioxide bubbles rise to the surface. These buffer the water acidity and provide the right conditions for the deposition of orange-coloured arsenic and antimony sulphides. This amorphous material also contains ore-grade gold and silver, but the quantity is trivial compared to the mass deposited below the pool. Features like these are only minor facets of very large hydrothermal systems. The Waiatapu system is at least 10,000 year old and originates from an upflow of hot water from several kilometres depth in the shadow of Rainbow Mountain, a dacite dome emplaced 160,000 years ago. The deposit below Champagne Pool represents only a fraction of the gold flowing through the system, so that even larger deposits may be present here, but inaccessible for at least the next 10,000 years.